What's up guys, welcome to new Unreal Engine 5 tutorial, today we are continuing with the GTA 6 tutorial series and in this episode we will set up the police AI health and also create the AP cable for money in cash. With that said, it's going to be a very easy to follow so let's get started. Alright, so the first thing that we need to do is go into the blueprints folder, actually the AI folder, go to police and open up our BAP police blueprint. As you can see here, we have the logic for firing and some other stuff, um, but of course we need to create the logic of health. Now we have already done it for the player and some other civilian AI, but let's do it for the police because it's going to be very, very straightforward. So what we need to do is just add an any damage event over here. And of course we will receive the incoming damage. So let's go and create a new variable, which of course will be the health variable. And let's set this to be a float. Now let's compile and set the default value to be like, I don't know, um, 100, right? Cool, with that said, I'm gonna basically get the health and subtract this from the incoming damage. And then of course, we're gonna drag in again, again the health and update the value with uh, the set. And there we go. So now of course, this health value is decreasing, but we need to check if the police AI should die. So let's go ahead and add a branch over here and let's get the health variable and just check if it's less or equal to zero. If so, we of course want it to ragdoll into the floor. So the very first thing that I want to do is go to the character movement component and the save with the movement. That way he won't be able to move once again. With that said, I want to also get the mesh, drag it, okay? Not the rifle, of course, then the mesh of the character. And then set simulate physics. And this will, of course, enable ragdoll. We have already used it a lot in the series. Now let's check in the mesh collision settings that we have what we need. As you can see in collision presets, we need to put this at, um, what is it, custom. And then on collision enabled, very important, we need to change this to collision enabled query and physics. So all the bones can interact with each other and so on. Cool, with that said, we are pretty much ready to go. The only thing we need to make sure is that he won't be able to fire anymore. So let's create a new variable and this will be something as is dead. And of course, this will be a boolean. So I'm going to go here, right, and do this if this is not true. So let's add a new boolean, not boolean, sorry, and add a branch over here. And there we go. So if we are not dead, we will be able to fire. And now, of course, we need to go in here, drag is dead and activate it. Very, very important. So with that said, we are ready to go because already in the player character, we have set all of the bullets to you know deal damage to the ai right so if i go ahead and press play press q to equip my rifle go here and start to shoot the police ai they should die but i'm killing civilians in the background also we need to check uh the collision settings now first of all let's go into the damage right and on the false let's add a print over here right string will be like uh damage so we know that, you know, if, if we're actually dealing damage or not. So now if we go back here and we go to the AI, you can see that we don't have any uh, type of print. So this went to be changed on the BP player. And you can see that we are using for the firing, right? The, the, the line trace by channel or the trace channel of visibility. So in the police, it is very important to go to the mesh, go down and turn visibility to block. That way our traces will actually impact the AI. So once again, you can see that now we actually have damage and boom, he's dead. <laughs> so we can delete this string. We actually had a string for damage, that's cool. All right, so with that said, we're good to go with the police AI now. For the second part of the tutorial, let's create this cable for uh, picking up cash, right? And, and increasing our uh, as we created in the previous episode, the, the bank balance, right? So let's go to the blueprints folder, right click, create a new blueprint class, and it will be an actor as it will be placed in the world. Let's name this something as BP underscore cash and open this up. So first of all, let's go ahead and add a new component. And for now, this will be a uh, static mesh and this will be the cash. Oh yeah, we can just name it uh, actually static mesh, okay? Now. Right now, I don't have any um, static mesh uh, for, you know, cash, but I'm going to make it just straightforward and add a basically a cube. OK, for example, this one, and I'm going to add a green uh, where it's a OK, 
uh, let me use add directly cube. It's gonna be easier because that will allow us to change the material. And what I want to do, right, and let's call this mesh, is to change the material to be green. And we actually already have, <laughs> look, a uh, basic asset 03 will work. So let's select that one. And let's put this to be like, um, like 0.3 and then let's unlock it. And let's make this, um, well, yeah, let's take this at 0.3. Let's make this like this and then like this. There we go. Okay, so we are essentially creating some money. Now let's drop it to the ground and let's see how this looks. Looks pretty neat. I'm gonna elevate it a bit. There we go. And then also, well, let's put this at 4.8 or something like that. More exact, right? And then I also want to increase it slightly. So 0.35. Okay, a bit better. And then I'm actually gonna create my own material because it will look a bit better. So I don't know if we have a materials folder, but let me just create it on here. <laughs> well, actually, no, it doesn't make sense. So yeah, let's right click, create actually a new materials folder. Let's right click material M underscore um, cash or money, you know, whatever you prefer. Uh, hold the three key in your keyboard and left click, and then we can plug that to the base color, okay? And change it to be a green, but of course, like a, a bit of darker green, right? And then we're gonna press one and left click, and then we can pass this into roughness and put like, I don't know, like, like five, because you know, we, money is not gonna reflect anything. So now, yes, we can go and apply with the arrow, the cash, okay, and there we go. We have cash over there. You can change the colors to look a bit better, whatever you prefer. And probably later in the series, we'll swap the, you know, the actual um, money thing, right? Uh, mesh. Now, another thing that we can do is add like some bands, right? And to do this, we can simply go and select the mesh, go to cube. This would like band one. And we can change the scale to be like 0.1. And then go move this like here. And just make this. Now we are essentially creating like a band, as you can see. <laughs> uh, now let's make a bit like 0.8. Oh, wait. Okay, let's drag. It's gonna be easier. And there we go. That looks way better. And let's disable snapping. Go here. Hold. Oh, we're gonna hold out. So we need to duplicate. And then move this like around here. It doesn't need to be exact, you know, see so a small item. And there you go. Now this actually looks more like money, right? With the bands. And there we go. Now we could also make them uh, smaller, whatever you prefer, really. But I think it looks pretty neat. If we also add like a detail, uh, sorry, a decal with a, a cash icon, that would like finish up the mesh, really. So uh, yeah, looking cool. Now, of course, we need to be able to uh, pick this up, right? Right now we cannot interact with it. So let's go to the cache add a new component, let's search for collision, and this will be sphere collision. And this is going to be our trigger. So if our player enters in this area, we will be able to interact with it, basically. So let's go ahead and just make this a bit bigger. Now things are going to be taking an approach um, to essentially pick up stuff. So you will see this in a second, but let's make sure that the collision preset is set as overlap all dynamic, which should be by default. So cool. That means that we can, you know, enter, but, you know, detect things. So now back in our BP player, we need to create this interaction, um, you know, prompt. Now, before doing that, I want to create a new interface. Now we already created interfaces in the past, as you can see, so let's do the same. And this will be for interactions uh, for pretty much everything. So let's go to the blueprint section over here. Blueprint interface, BPI, interact. Open this up and this will be just interact. Now, we can create one general for interact, which we will do, but also let's create one specific for the cache. So it'll be like pick up cache. And the cool thing is that we will obtain an, uh, an output. So this will be like a uh, amount, right? Because we need to know what amount of cash we need to pick up. So there we go, set this to float, close this, go to cache settings, and add this new interact interface. And now in the interfaces section, double click on, uh, sorry, interact not, it will be pick up cash. Now for the amount, well, let's right click, create a new variable, and this will be the cash amount. Let's go compile and set a default of like 10. And now very important, let's click on this eye icon. 
so it is available here so that way i can change the variable on this instance on this actor right so cool that's pretty much it for this section now we just need to implement the player so in here we are gonna go and actually we already have like an interact um part over here but let's make a separate let's just for now okay uh put the e key all right let me find it and now we press the e key what we would do is very very straightforward it's gonna get the overlapping actors and let's do a for each loop so that means that we will detect what specific actors we are overlapping with as you can see in the viewport we have this radius for the trigger right for the catch which let me make a bit bigger so like 80 right so very inside of this we will detect this as of an overlapping actor now we will go through the loop because it's of course um right uh a list an array and we will just check if it does implement the interface of bpi interact and if it does we can make a branch and interact with it so we could get the array element and do the pick up cache remember it's the pick up cache not the other one and now with that we receive the amount right so uh what we need to do is essentially just add the cache now for this where it was here so we got a, an add cache um event already so it as simple as just drag in add a cache and then plug in the amount to the amount and that's it <laughs> we're good to go now very important we actually need to also delete this um cache so let's get this and do a destroy actor and we would you know destroy the cache from the ground which is very important <laughs> if not it will be like a money glitch bug right so let's go go here press e and boom we got the cache as you can see it should yeah so it added it into there now as you can see we also got 165 and you're probably wondering why that's because in the previous episode we left where it said add a cache with a delay to test it out but let's delete that and now we actually got so 100 pick it up 110 and everything is working if you, you can see we can change the variable here to whatever we want and that's it so that's it guys, if you found this video helpful, I would really appreciate it if you could like the video and subscribe to the channel. We remember have full access to the project files through Patreon on YouTube members, so link in the description. Join my Discord server, follow me on my socials, and now yes, the call I said, bye bye.